Really? You, you gotta, gotta, be gotta be kidding, kidding me. I feel like this ties in with where we started our conversation. You know, by today. the way, I didn't hear anything. I know, but but everyone else did. Okay, cool. This ties in with the beginning of our conversation today, Pops, talking about Ford. I don't yes. think this is why Ford's going to fail, to be very clear. My my hypothesis is rooted in their business strategy of going up market. This headline, Dad, stood yeah. out to me. Future Fords could repossess themselves and drive away if you miss payments. I like that. Alternatively, the car could drive itself to a junkyard if it costs too much to repossess. Yes, Really? So Ford is working on some technology. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's read it. Yeah. They've got a new patent. Average car payments have been rising for a while. Thank you for this, Peter. Yeah. Although auto loan delinquency rates have been down since the height of the pandemic, they're starting to go back up. Ford yes. applied for a patent to make the repossession process go smoother. For the bank, that is. The patent document was submitted to the United States Patent Office in August 2021, but it was formally published just the other day. Yes. It's titled, quote, Systems and Methods to Repossess a Vehicle. It describes several ways to make the life of somebody who has missed several car payments harder. It explicitly says the system, which could be installed on any future vehicle in the automaker's lineup with data connection, would be capable of, quote, disabling a functionality of one or more components of the vehicle, everything from the engine to the air conditioning. For vehicles with autonomous or semi-autonomous driving capability, the system could, quote, move the vehicle from the first from a first spot to a second spot that is more convenient for a tow truck to tow the vehicle, move the vehicle from the premises of the owner to a location such as, for example, the premises of a repossessed agency, or if the lending institution considers the, quote, financial viability of executing a repossession procedure to be unjustifiable, the vehicle could drive itself to the junkyard. Wow. Really? Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty amazing stuff. I mean, if, if it actually did what, what they, they're hoping it might do. The, the good news to me is the fact, well, it's Ford. So, <laughs> it probably won't work. so more than likely, it probably won't work the way it was intended, and it'll be subject to a future recall. So for those of you <laughs> who have the the self-repossession technology, yeah. you'll you need have to, to, pay, you have to pay extra for that. You, you'll need to bring that into the dealership. Uh, uh, there's been a recall on that. <laughs> Could yeah. you imagine Stellantis? Because they're the ones that are bullish, most bullish on subscriptions. Yeah. They, Stellantis, to be clear. Yeah. $30 billion in annual revenue they want from consumer subscriptions. Imagine they have like a self-recall line item. $2.99 a year. Yeah. And, they'll, and they'll position it as a credit, uh, protect your credit system. Whatever. But I could you imagine? I mean, if 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 – you were a Ford owner and you knew you were delinquent on your car loan yep. and, and you knew the recall was to, well, enhance the, uh, the repossession capability of the, of the technology and the software that's built into your, are you taking it in to get that corrected? No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting stuff. And, and that came to us from our dear friend Alex, Alex yeah. the sound guy in Alaska, the Alaska sound guy. Yeah, uh, it, you know, it, it it more than anything, it, it provides us with something to chat about on the show. <sighs> it is pretty interesting yes. stuff. That's uh, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right, Dad, you can sell your car on Car Edge. What's the deal? The deal is you just plug in your VIN number, and we'll get you offers from local dealers in minutes seconds carhedge.com slash sell okay all right pops this sadly yes this sadly came in from a dealership that we actually are quite friendly with yes earl stewart toyota okay and the reason this is today's really you've got to be kidding me is because this is the sincere disdain yes that we have for southeast toyota distributors yes earl stewart stewart toyota we Confidently can sit here and say they are a great dealership to work with if you are looking for a Toyota dealership in Florida. Yes. The issue is they get their cars from a distributor, the same distributor that all the others get them at. Earl Stewart does not add additional dealer markups. Earl Stewart, just like all the other Toyota dealers, cannot cannot stop port installed accessories. Base price of the vehicle, $45,908. Six thousand two hundred and ninety-nine dollars of packages and accessories. They were kind, though, Dad. They did offer a $750 keep it wild savings in the $6,300 in crap that they added to this car. Well, you know, and truth be told, the customer might have wanted it this way. 
We no, the know. customer sent this to me out of frustration uh, because they said, hey, I thought Earl Stewart was the place to go. And I responded. I said, they are the place to go if you're looking for a but Toyota. But they, they don't always They control. can't control what Southeast Toyota Distributors does, which is this crap. So, yeah, I hear you, Dad. Maybe yes. the customer wants this. They can. But What kind of tires do they put on there for $2,300? I mean, this is this is. The fact that they gave a seven hundred and fifty dollars discount amidst all this, I think, is hilarious. Yes, well, that's because it was to keep it wild, keep it wild savings. <laughs> yes, yeah, there, there are Southeast Toyota distributors sucks. They do, they do. They've monopolized the market. They have Toyota, they got Toyota, and then they add a bunch of add-ons and they make a bunch of money. That's a terrible business. I hate that business. I hate that business. That's a terrible business. Yeah, well, they it's like, incredibly they, profitable, but they it's a like terrible it. business. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there are some who like it, not necessarily the customers, and not necessarily always the dealers. Yeah, the people who have yachts because of this. But no, no it's incredibly profitable. Incredibly profitable. Yeah. It is so stupid. It is so stupid. It shouldn't exist a decade from now. It should exist a month from now. It will, but it shouldn't. It's, it's going to exist now. for you know. It's a pretty ironclad contract. <laughs> That they have. We're gonna we're gonna keep making YouTube videos about it, but I don't know if Toyota's listening. Well, here's here's the deal. You know, when they they set up a couple distributorships when they were first coming to the country, and at that point in time it made total sense. I mean, it wasn't like Toyota was a well sought after brand at that particular point in time. Um, so this made sense to Toyota. Now today Obviously, Toyota wouldn't enter into this type of an agreement. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't. But at the time, in what was it, the late 60s, mm -hmm. it, it made sense. So, But, yes, it's unfortunate for consumers.